Welcome to Tech Blueprint, a window that lets you know the latest technology news in the world. Why can Huawei phones still be fully revived? A few years ago, Huawei was choked by the United States and the chip supply was cut off. Everyone thought it would be cool this time, but in the blink of an eye, Mate 60 was born and Kirin chips returned. What secrets are hidden behind this? Don't worry, today we will see how Chinese semiconductors dare to confront global giants head-on. In May 2019, the United States issued a ban, and Huawei was directly pressed to the ground it won't sell you chips, and it won't give you technology. Ordinary people will see that this is not the end. But Huawei's boss Ren Jingfei was not in a hurry. He slapped the table and said, China has a spare tire. At that time, the building of Huawei's headquarters in Shenzhen was brightly lit at night. The high silicon team worked overtime like chicken blood, turned out the technical assets they had accumulated long ago, and made the Kirin 9000 chip. Data shows that Huawei spent more than 20 billion on research and development that year, accounting for 15% of the company's total research and development expenses. This is no joke. I think this is like raising troops for a thousand days and deploying them for a moment. Huawei knew this day would come and prepared its weapons in advance so that it would not be strangled by others without the ability to fight back. Besides, in 2023, in an inconspicuous small factory in Nanshan, Shenzhen, Xinkalai, a dark horse, quietly emerged. Their trial produced an epitaxial equipment called Emation, with a 100% yield of 12-inch wafers, and an efficiency 10% higher than the same model of ASML in the Netherlands. As soon as the news came out, the industry was in an uproar, who is this? Why is it so fierce? On the day of acceptance, people from Huawei and SMIC went there, and the factory was so quiet that you could hear a pin drop. As soon as the equipment started and the data came out, everyone was dumbfounded. This performance is definitely at the top international level. I have to say that Shinkai Lai really has the meaning of making a fortune in silence. Although it is low-key, it is a king bomb as soon as it strikes, and the three words made in China are engraved on the global semiconductor map. Looking ahead, in 2020, SMIC spent 8.8 .8 billion US dollars to build an SN1 factory in Pudong, Shanghai, aiming at advanced processes below 14 nanometers. At that time, the US ban was stuck, and ASML's lithography machines could not be bought new, so they could only rely on second-hand goods. But SMIC relied on process optimization and domestic equipment replacement to achieve a monthly output of 15,000 wafers, paving the way for the subsequent 5 nanometers technology. Fast forward to July 2024. At the China Semiconductor Industry Summit at the Beijing National Convention Center, SMIC and Xinkai Lai jointly launched a big move. DUA lithography machines were mass-produced, 5 nanometers processes were completed, and key parts were 100% localized. Experts from the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology stood up and said, this is not only a technical achievement, but also a victory in the supply chain turnaround. I think this is very exciting, just like a relay race, one baton after another, and finally ran out of acceleration. In 2021, at Tsinghua University in Beijing, Huawei and the Tsinghua Institute of Microelectronics played a big game. They spent 1 billion yuan and sent more than 50 engineers to the laboratory to jointly tackle the process technology below 5 nanometers. 
What is SAQP? It's okay if ordinary people don't understand it. Simply put, it is a way to make top-level chips without ASML's EUV lithography machine. Science Bulletin reported in 2022 that this technology was successfully verified in the laboratory, which directly gave the green light to Shinkai Lai's mass production. I think this matter is quite like, there is no way out when there is no way out, but there is another village when the willows are dark and the flowers are bright. Huawei is not only tough, but also pulls universities to work together, and the technology overflows. In the past, Chinese semiconductors were always strangled by others. If ASML's EUV lithography machine is not sold to you, you can only stare blankly. But now, as soon as Shinkai Lai's DUA lithography machine was unveiled in 2024, the export restrictions of the Netherlands became air. When Huawei Mate 60's Kirin 9000S was born, ordinary people may not understand the manufacturing process, but they will know that this chip is awesome if they use it smoothly. Looking at the data again, China's semiconductor self-sufficiency rate is expected to exceed 40% in 2025. This number sounds so encouraging. I think this situation is quite like 30 years in the East, 30 years in the West. China's semiconductor industry has gone from following behind to overtaking and shining the sword in the world, relying on this unyielding spirit. When the Shenzhen laboratory lit up the eternal lights, the high silicon team used 20 billion research and development expenses to melt the Kirin 9000 chip when SMIC's 8.8 .8 billion US dollar factory broke through the ASML blockade, Shinkai Lai amazed the world with 100% yield equipment, when Tsinghua Laboratory gave birth to SAQP technology that bypasses EUV. China's semiconductor industry completed an epic counterattack with DUA lithography machine from the spare tire plan to the global sword. The 40% self-sufficiency rate is behind the never-extinguished fire of innovation. This tough battle not only makes Huawei and Xinkai Lai proud, but also gives confidence to every Chinese. Next time you buy a mobile phone, don't just look at the brand, check whether it has a Chinese chip. In the next 10 years, China's technology will be able to climb a few more mountains and no one can stop it.